Hi guys and welcome to the Sunderland vs Luton match preview. Of course, it is the first leg of the Championship Playoff semi-final. It is going to take place at the Stage of Light, 5.30 kickoff, and it is going to be in front of a sellout crowd at the Stage of Light. There's 45 plus thousand Sunderland fans going to be rammed into that stadium. It's sold out as I say and as it stands and uh, it's going to be a hell of an atmosphere, I'm sure, but we need to... Keep our heads on us. Of course, make it an absolute fortress. Make it a difficult place. Make it an uncomfortable place for that Luton side. But, you know, Luton are a very, very good side. The third for a reason. They're way ahead of us in terms of uh, in terms of, of points tally. Uh, of course, that doesn't mean anything, really, when you're going into a playoffs. It can be a lottery, but you need to approach it in the right way. And it's over the course of two legs. Anything can happen. Um, but as I say, you know, a lot of people still look at Luton as well. It's a little Luton town. I think Mowbray said a similar thing. Um, but you know they were there last season they're there this season they're there on merit they're a good side they're no longer little Luton Town regardless of how you look, you look at them they're a well run club they're a very well run club and they're a very well run side as well you know the manager there has done absolutely fantastic work and um, they've got some fantastic players and they're going to be incredibly difficult to play against they're currently 14 I believe it's 13 14 games unbeaten at the moment I think there's about six draws in there the rest of them wins they've been outstanding so going into the playoffs they are well up for it with some fantastic form they'll be absolutely full and filled to the brim with confidence I'm sure but as will we we're going to be flying with our momentum after what happened on the last game of the season beating a team like Preston who aren't a bad side at all don't concede many goals to come away with a 3-0 win on the last game of the season just before we go into the playoffs with a first home leg it, it, it really is it, it's heads to tails really but of course you need to look more into it Luton they're a big physical side they're very direct and that's what worries me whenever we come up against a direct team it's difficult as it is but given that you know our average height at the moment given the plethora of injuries we have our average height is what it's like five foot ten if that you know with Oh, now, you know, of all the defenders we've got at the minute, you know, Sirkin and Gooch, there's a chance they will feature, but those two look relatively unlikely. It's just today, basically, Mo well, yesterday Mowbray has said that um, it all depends on what happens in training today. There's a small chance that Gooch and Sirkin will get on the pitch, and if they come through it on the training ground, if they come through it uh, sort of unscathed, then they'll have a chance of playing, but they're not too sure as of yet, as of yesterday's interview. So there's a good chance we've got Gooch missing and Sirkin, which means the only defenders we have is Luke O'Neill, who, as we know, isn't a natural centre-back, and a right-back in Trey Hume, and those are the only defenders we have available. So we have a makeshift centre-back and a right-back available in terms of defenders. That is it. So we could be in a lot of trouble, in a, in a lot of trouble in terms of defensive work. So for me, it's a case of just going absolutely all out. Because, you know, against Preston, we really did push it. Because we have such strong players going forward in terms of, like, you know, the wing play and the, the sort of number 10 roles. We have such quality there with Clark and Roberts, Diallo, of course, amongst others, Pritchard. Uh, we have such a great quality there. We need to just take advantage of that and just, you know, throw everything at it. Kitchen sink, throw everything at it. Because against Preston, as I say, going forward, we looked so dangerous. But the second we lost the ball in that final third, and they pumped the ball forward direct, well, absolutely all over the place because we don't have any defenders and the one-on-one with the keeper. And it happened a handful of times where they arguably should have done a lot better, Preston. So going forward, I'm confident in us. At the back, this it's where I worry. It, it could, you know, if, like we saw against... Um, the other week, uh, well, it's Watford. It was two corners, two goals for them. That's that was the only chance they made the entire game. Um, but because we have such a lack of height, you put the ball in the box. It's a goal. It is a given that they're going to get chances. So we need to play to our strengths and maximise our strengths 100%. Um, and to try and stop the crosses coming in as quickly as possible as well. It, that's going to be a main focus. And then bring the ball forward and get at them and just be relentless going forward. That's the only option we have in this kind of game because it's going to be their bread and butter pinging the ball forward and pinging the ball over the top um, you know because they have dangerous players you know Morris is about standing this season I'm not too sure whether he's fit or not I know he didn't play last time out um, so I don't know whether he has picked up a knock or what I could be totally wrong there um, but uh, you know great player some really solid players across the back and through the middle and um, they generally play three at the back um, depending on how they want to play which you'll see um, which it might suit us, the three at the back, potentially. I know they have some big lads at the back, so it, there's no point in trying to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them in the air. But if you keep it along the ground with the three at the back and you have the likes of Clark, Diallo and Roberts, as I say, getting at them and Gelhart pressing, going forward, we, we're definitely in with a shout. It's defensively that I'm worried about, as I say. Um, 
But we shall see. Uh, we shall see. I think if we manage to keep him out, we have more than a good enough opportunity. I know that at the stage of light, we've it's, we don't have great form this season. Pretty poor form actually at home. Our away form is fantastic, and that's where we've been picking up most of our points. But at home, we've been very disappointing. So um, yeah, personally, if we come away with a draw, and I know I'm not at the uh, predictions part of the, the the video yet of the preview. But if we come away with a draw, I, I wouldn't be totally disheartened at all. If anything, I'd be quite optimistic going forward um, because away from home, we have been that good and we've been a lot more ruthless um, away from home. Um, so, yeah, we'll go into my preferred 11 for the game. I'll give you my starting 11 first with the presumption that Sirkin and Gooch are going to be all right. So this is what I would go with. First and foremost, and as you can see, it is the 4-2-3-1 with Pato in goal, Sirkin 09, Hume and Gooch across the back with Equa and Dan Neal in the middle, Clark, Robertson, Diallo in behind, Gelhart. So that is pretty much the side that ran out last time against Preston. Um, but as I say, Sirkin come off at half-time um, against Preston. He might not feature. Gooch as well, he picked up a knock. He might not feature, but that is the lineup I would go with. I just feel like that kind of team, that team there, the base of it, the core of it, the spine, has gelled, particularly over the last few games. I don't see why we would uh, we would change that. Equa, for me, has been outstanding the last game or two. He's just getting better and better, and we need that physicality in the middle. So Equa and Neil in the middle, I think that's probably the best play we could go for. But if Sirkin and Gooch are not fit, are not ready for this game, I'm going to change it to this it is incredibly makeshift, and I'm not comfortable with it whatsoever, particularly at the back, but we'll have to see. I've gone for Anderson at the back. As the young lad, he's played, you know, twice, I think, this season. But in terms of natural defenders, we don't have much at all. We have next to nothing. So Anderson, he'd get what, his third appearance or whatever it is from the start in such a massive game. It'd probably be a bit too much for a lad, but we just don't have anything else. We have absolutely nothing else that I can think of anyway, unless you you know, dropped someone back from midfield there, like Clark, and put him as a sort of left wing back in a trio. I don't know, but I feel like Clark needs to be up the other end of the pitch. So I've gone for Anderson 09 and Hume, and of course Clark, Equa, Neil, and Roberts. Clark and Roberts would have to get back and trap back a lot and do the dirty work with Pritchard and Diallo with Gelhart up there. It's, again, it's a massive mess. It's a huge mess, but I just don't really know what to go for, if I'm totally honest. There is apparently a small chance that we may see Agilasi, but... I wouldn't even want to risk it. You know, yes, he's more natural, but he's been out for quite some time. To be so sort of stale and not exactly match fit and not have many minutes in his legs um, and then throwing him into a game like that, you could argue I've just said the same thing with Anderson, but I think it might be a bit too much. So that's probably what I'd go for. It's a risk, but that's it. Of course, in the comments down below, let me know what you would do, how you would start if Gooch and Sirkin are not fit. Now for the dreaded score predictions. Now this is really, really difficult. If you look at the previous results against Luton, which I know don't mean everything, but we've drew the, the last two games against them, um, one all. Uh, well, in fact, the last four games we've drawn with them, you know, back in League One as well. We've drawn the last four times we've played against them. Of course, all very different situations, all different scenarios, and different teams and lineups and what have you, in different uh, times within uh, each club's history. So, of course, that's going to contribute towards the scoreline as well. But I'm going to go for another one all. I'm going to go for another one all. I think it'll be really, really tight. Um, I think there will be times where we will be clinging on for dear life because, as I say, they are a direct side. And I think there will be a lot of goal mask scrambles, a lot of times where we're going to be biting our nails off and have barely any nails left. But I think we will come away with a one all draw. I'm going to go for Roberts to get an equaliser very, very late on. Uh, I think they might score relatively early and it'll be a case of us just really trying to bang on the door, trying to get an equaliser and eventually we'll get it. That's the kind of game I can see it being. And again, I wouldn't be totally against that because then we can just go... Or you know, throw the kitchen sink at, it, at their place. Of course, I, I would love for us to come away with a 2 3 0 win at the stage of light. That would be amazing. Get the place bouncing, just really overpower him with our attacking threats, and that would be ideal. But in terms of the prediction, I think it would be more realistic for me to go for a one all. So that is what I'm going to go for. So that is it, guys. That's my match preview done. There won't be a match preview or a review for the, for the second leg because I'm actually going on holiday on Sunday. I'm going away to Portugal. So hopefully by then. With 3 0 up on aggregate, and then I can just watch it in a nice bar in Portugal and, uh, and have a nice time. And I don't really need to care whether we um, whether we sort of draw or get the a 1 0 loss or whatever, because we're 3 or 4 0 up by that point anyway. So hopefully that is the case, but that's wishful thinking. But there we go, guys. Let me know in the comments down below what you think the score is going to be over the course of the legs. I would, 
I'd, I'd like to think we're going to make it to the final, but one step at a time, eh? One step at a time. But there we go. Please hit the like button for me if you have enjoyed this preview and, and if you have enjoyed reviews and previews throughout the season, because again, this could be the last one. Please hit the like button for me. It's always so, so appreciated. And if you're new, hit the subscribe button as well to become a fully fledged member of the Sony Army. But for now, take care and stay jammy.